I'd, I'd like to join my colleagues from FGD in welcoming everyone. It is a really great honor to be here on this important workshop. Of course, we all understand why the topic is very important to domestic debt as its share has increased uh, significantly in, uh, in recent years. And uh, uh, thank you for being part of these uh, pertinent discussions and finding time. So this workshop is not a standalone, it is a continuation of meetings, it, it, will, it will involve peer learning and we particularly want to hear your views and how you yes. how you see yeah. your challenges and possible solutions. Wow. And uh, it will be a continuous policy dialogue with our division, but the ECA uh, more broadly. So in, in recent years, the sovereign domestic debt restructuring has become more prevalent and it has become a pertinent issue and have involved increasing proportion of the overall uh, public debt. Of course, we all know that the proportion has increased and the structure of the, of the public debt has uh, changed significantly. This, this is partly because many African countries have become middle-income countries. Now we have 30 African countries middle-income, therefore they do not qualify necessarily for concessional financing. And also uh, the needs have uh, grown tremendously. We have uh, needs to finance pandemic, needs to finance climate change. So both relative to the size of the GDP, uh, the challenges and the availability of concessional financing, the available sources are not adequate. So countries are increasingly turning to the domestic debt. And we need to also understand better what are the solutions. So in light of the increasing importance of domestic debt as a mechanism for developing countries to mobilize resources, it is critical to conduct uh, and examine the possible approaches uh, to restructuring and again to weigh very carefully the trade-offs and what may possible cost and benefit be. Uh, the significance of domestic uh, debt restructuring is growing, but there is so far no actually need practical framework given partly because each country has its unique circumstances, but nevertheless there are many common features and experiences that can be shared. And this is one of the purposes of this workshop. Uh, restructuring domestic debt in periods of crisis is, of course, not advisable. I mean, uh, prevention is uh, much more uh, pertinent and useful than, than, than solving it during crisis when the, negotiation, the negotiating terms for the countries are not favorable. The process of domestic debt restructuring uh, possesses the capacity to improve uh, significant social and economic burdens, impose significant uh, social and economic burdens on particular workers who are already experiencing hardship. It also po uh, poses a risk to future economic expansion and undermines necess uh, necessary social unity needed for economic uh, recovery. Of course, these are risks, but there are also benefits if the uh, economic situation of the country improves during the debt restructuring, the credit rating will eventually improve and the country can ex uh, attract new resources. So these are the trade-offs that countries need to weigh. The financial well-being of workers is significantly affected, however, when their savings and pension funds are at risk, uh, and uh, particularly due to the fact that these accounts serve as their primary sources, unlike larger external creditors. So again, it depends whether how developed the pension funds are and whether country grow, grow draws on them in the domestic debt. So again, circumstances very significantly. Yeah. And it is a notable characteristic that distinguishes domestic restructuring from external one. And this characteristic, which can be considered a negative externality, pertains to the fact that domestic restructuring imposes direct expenses in the local financial system, which may result in a decrease in the fiscal savings for the sovereigns resulting from the debt exchange. But it's not only a risk for the fiscal, we call it fiscal financial nexus, and it's, it can be also a major risk to the financial sector because if the banks are lending to the government and suddenly quality of that asset decreases, then of course the basically the balance sheets of the of the financial sector versus. And this doesn't apply only to developing countries or African countries. Actually, there are many experiences from advanced economies that the countries can look on what happens with the fiscal and financial nexus and they can draw on it. So during the periods of a sovereign crisis, this connection between financial and fiscal sec sectors has the potential to affect the balance sheet, as, as I already mentioned, encompassing both the asset and liability aspect, 
as well as the revenue of these institutions. So when this externality is internalized, it will lead to a reduced amounts of debt relief received by the sovereign and all else equal decrease in the likelihood of a domestic restructuring compared to an external restructuring. The expansion of domestic debt beyond a level that can be maintained may also have a negative impact on growth, mostly by reducing the availability of credit for the private sector, but also, of course, by increasing the debt service cost, which then uh, crowds out other growth-enhancing uh, expenditures. High level of domestic debt may also uh, significantly pose significant fiscal weakness to international signal fiscal weakness to international investors affecting confidence in the country's ability to manage its finances and same for domestic investors who are capable of investing uh, internationally they will then opt to do that rather than investing domestically. Effective domestic debt clearance strategies should align with the goal of preserving macroeconomic stability while also promoting equitable growth and being executed in a transparent manner. Now, of course, uh, trade-offs have to be made during uh, during these uh, uh, during these choices. And in the current setting, where basically we have situation when international interest rates are likely to stay higher for longer, um, you know, this may basically impose additional external burden also on domestic debt. So countries and central banks will have to weigh between now. Uh, you know, fighting inflation and promoting growth. And of course, it's quite desirable to, to grow out of that. So so the objective of maintaining uh, growth high will probably, you know, be a priority at the expense of inflation, which actually also uh, is one way how to, how to basically reduce the debt burden. So both growth and the inflation trade-offs will have to be carefully weighed. This workshop aims to equip African members uh, minister, member states ministries of finance with uh, domestic debt restructuring and areas the debt uh, areas clearance approaches in order to assist african member states with domestic debt relief the workshop will also seek to develop a preliminary set of guidelines for, uh, for such restructuring and areas clearance and of course um, i think as Leo already said and uh, as i mentioned Important here is the peer-to-peer -peer -peer learning to make it practical and realistic to your specific circumstances. So I thank you for being part of this process, and and we look forward working with you this time and going forward. Thank you. Thank you.